one of the more unusual classes ever to work on Britain's railways, the Class 442 Wessex Electrics, despite their aged underpinnings, were thoroughly modern machines that revolutionised express passenger operations on the Southwest Main Line by reintroducing, for the first time since the steam era, a dedicated intercity service between London Waterloo, Southampton, Bournemouth, Poole and Weymouth, while also bringing home the record for the fastest third rail powered electric train in history. The requirement of the Wessex Electric's train sets dates back over 20 years to 1967, where, after the electrification of the first 110 miles of the Southwest Main Line between London Waterloo and Branksome at a cost of £15 million, steam bowed out in favour of brand new electric multiple units on top services between London, Basingstoke, Winchester, Southampton and Bournemouth, although the harbour town and popular resort of Weymouth, 60 miles to the west, remained cut out of the plan due to the constraints of the budget, and thus required a unique system whereby four REP and four TC non-powered trailers would swap and change with diesel traction at Bournemouth for the onward journey to Weymouth, usually being hauled by Class 33s built by the Birmingham Railway Carriage and Wagon Company and were capable of 85 miles an hour. Come the 1980s, the presence of the unelectrified section between Bournemouth and Weymouth exhibited a major operational constraint as diesel and electric traction were forced to hand over operations to one another, although despite its age, the rolling stock, which comprised the ubiquitous 4 Rep EMU and the non-powered 4TC trailer stock, was still performing its role perfectly well, with original plans being to rebuild and refurbish the 4 Reps and 4TCs in order to see them work well into the 1990s. Although with the promise of funding being gathered for final electrification of the route to Weymouth, Plans were changed to adopt a brand new series of electric multiple units, utilising the body shells of the highly successful Mark III coaches, which had been introduced during the mid-1970s on loco-hauled expresses and the extremely popular HST sets. From 1982, the former geographic region system of British Rail was reorganised into a sectorised business model comprising intercity for long-distance express services, provincial, later regional railways for local and commuter services outside London, the rail freight and parcel sectors, and the London and South East or LSE sector, which, from November 1985, was renamed to Network South East, and was responsible for operating high-density commuter services across London and Southern England, the goal of sectorisation being to allow the various departments a greater degree of autonomy from the wider British Rail management, and thereby tailor their practices to suit their respective needs. Within weeks of its formation, Network South East was able to persuade the British Rail Board and the Department of Transport to electrify the remaining 60 miles between Branksome and Weymouth at a cost of £43.5 million, £37 million of which would be spent on the provision of new rolling stock, this scheme being authorised on January 28, 1986, and would comprise the delivery of 24 five-car express passenger units based on the 23-metre-long Mark III coach body shell with modifications to the coaches including the replacement of the Mark III's original slamming passenger doors with automatic plug doors, and the fitting of a full air conditioning system, the final designation of the new units being the Class 442, or under the unique Southern Region classification system, 5 Wes or 5 Car Wessex. Subsequent to this, tenders were invited in order to complete an order based on two options, the rebuilding of 4 Rep motor coaches with Mark III body shells, or the development and construction of a brand new class of train set, although this would still make abundant use of four rep traction equipment, the latter option being abandoned due to time constraints set by the British Rail Board, which required that the new train sets be ready for service by December 1987, with a view to starting newly electrified Weymouth services from May 1988, British Rail Engineering Limited, or BREL, eventually being awarded the bid, with construction of the stock to be undertaken at their Derby Litchurch Lane works, rather than the more traditional York works, as Derby had specialised in delivering the Mark III trailers throughout the previous decade. To simplify the construction and speed up delivery time, the two trailer standard intermediate vehicles were visually identical, with the standard Mark III-B all-steel loco hauled trailer coach providing the basic vehicle for the four trailer coaches of the unit, the door specification being altered from sliding plug to swing plug, as a number of Mark III coaches had been constructed for the Irish State Railways to this design, although they didn't share the same door mechanism. Irish variants of the Mark III coach going on to form the basis of the 442's motor coach, as the generator van design was found to have increased mechanical strength in order to accommodate the weight of the traction equipment, these vehicles being approximately 15 tons heavier than the trailer coaches. For the cab designs of the driving trailers, the specification required that the units be capable of being hauled off the electrified network by suitably equipped diesel locomotives to allow for engineering diversions via the Laverstock Loop and Romsey and between Havant and St Denis, 
Although this route had been slated for later electrification, the result being the provision of Buckeye couplers, side buffers, 27-way jumper cables, and standard BR electric train heating sockets. These final outlines for the Class 442 sets only being brought together by May 1986 in a revised tender from BREL, meaning the firm had only two years to build and test the trains prior to their envisaged service entry. In the end, the Class 442, or 5 WES units, would comprise five coaches including a driving trailer composite, or DTC, with a standard class saloon at the cab end, and, in a move these days that can only be found on the European continent, the provision of six first-class compartments, followed by a trailer standard, or TS, a motor buffet lounge standard, or MBLS, with a standard class saloon, two luggage compartments, the conductor's office and the buffet area, another trailer standard that differed to its counterpart by way of a wheelchair parking space and a disabled toilet, and a driving trailer standard, or DTS, with full second-class seating, all of these coaches being fully air-conditioned and all exterior passenger doors of the power-operated swing plug type, which were provided at both ends of the three intermediate coaches and the inner ends of the driving trailers. Newly introduced for the 442s was the use of an updated seating design from the experimental BREL International Train, a series of 10 coaches which had been developed for the purposes of promoting potential export versions of the Mark III carriage. While the cab end design provided a smooth, rounded profile, with nose-end gangways to allow the units to work in pairs, with uninterrupted access, the cab windows being of a wraparound design that was reminiscent of the original Class 309 Clacton units of the Great Eastern, although unlike the 309's wraparound cab windows, which were notoriously difficult to repair, the cab windows of the Class 442's came ready-fitted in a metal frame which made changing the glass simpler and prevented leaks. Outshopped in a revised variant of the Network Southeast red, white and blue livery, the Class 442's were internally designed to represent the latest in intercity travel for a British train, including double glazed windows, full carpeting which helped with noise reduction, and, for additional styling flair, murals, created by Edward Pond, were located in the coach end vestibules that depicted famous scenes along the course of the southwest main line, including Durdle Door, Lulworth Cove, and Chesil Beach. Construction of the first steel body shells took place at Derby during the latter part of 1986, with fitting out continuing through 1987 until the first unit, 442401, was handed over to Network Southeast in the presence of the train operator's director, Chris Green, on December 18, 1987 the set being dragged to Bournemouth Depot on January 29, 1988, in order to undergo trials, the Pioneer unit undertaking its first powered run on February 11, and was partly commissioned to enable the program of staff training to commence, the set being followed by numbers 2402 and 2403 later in the year, which were delivered without full seating as a time-saving measure in order to allow staff training programs to be progressed as quickly as possible, the fitting out of interior furnishings for the units taking place from March 1988. On April 14, 1988, Units 2401 and 2403 undertook the first public use of the train on a run between London Waterloo and Weymouth, completing the journey in a mere 1 hour and 59 minutes, while reaching a recorded top speed of 109 miles an hour, setting the official record for fastest train to be powered by either a third rail or conductor rail electrification system. Although in truth this honour, though unofficially, goes to a pair of four rep units, which undertook brake test runs between Woking and Basingstoke, while during this promotional run, Though two units were present, passengers could only be carried in set 2401, as 2403's interior fitting had not been completed in time. In the end, while the 442s had illustrated a rapid development and assembly when compared to a scratch-built unit, this still wasn't enough to meet BR's stringent deadline, and with only four units available to enter service by the proposed launch of the updated timetable on May 15, 1988, only two 10-car diagrams were possible in the morning and evening peak between London Waterloo and Bournemouth while remaining services beyond Bournemouth to Weymouth were operated by a motley selection of slam-door units, including four BEPs, four CIGs, and the ever-present four Rep 4TC lash-up, requiring passengers aboard the five WES units to change at Bournemouth in order to proceed to destinations in the west, exacerbated further by an overall lack of rolling stock on the southwest main line due to the number of four reps having been withdrawn in order to supply the upcoming five WES units with traction equipment, meaning Class 73 electro-diesels and loco-hauled stock had to be drafted in at the last minute. As for the 442s themselves, a number of problems were quick to become apparent during their initial entry into service, including technical problems with the plugged doors, the cab end jumper cable covers, and working in multiple with diesel locomotives, while at the same time there was an insufficient first-class accommodation and too much luggage space, 
meaning that after the first seven units had been delivered, the remaining sets emerged from the Derby Works with a revised interior arrangement in the DTC that was redesignated the driving trailer first, which accommodated a 14-seat saloon behind the cab, fitted out to full first-class standards, although still with four abreast seating, this eventually being rolled out to the initial batch of units. For working with other classes of rolling stock, the Buckeye couplers and 27-way jumpers were fitted to enable working with other multiple units of the southern region, but in terms of locomotive drags in the event of diversions, the sets were only compatible with Class 33, 37, 47 and 50 so as to provide electric train heating, while the ubiquitous Class 73 electro-diesels were only suitable for short distance moves and with no heating or lighting provision, and the Class 33s, while equipped to operate push-pull services as per their original duties with 4TC trailer sets, were found not to be able to work suitably with the Class 442s. The biggest problem with the Wessex Electrics upon their launch, though, was with their highly complex external passenger door opening systems, which could be controlled from either the passenger vestibules or the conductor's office in the buffet car, with a key switch selector preventing release of the door locks until the train was moving at less than 2 miles an hour, and selective door opening options allowing for the front and rear three coaches of a single unit train and one unit of a 10 car train to operate at stations with too short a platform. However, due to the complexity of the selective door opening system, many passengers found that the door opening buttons had been disabled in their vestibules and thus meant they couldn't either enter or exit the train at stations which were long enough to accommodate a full train, and thus from June 13, 1988, all passenger door operations were placed under the control of the conductor exclusively until January 1989, after which modifications were made which removed three-car selective door control while stations with short platforms, such as Morton in Dorset, were physically extended to allow for their use by five-car Wessex Electric sets. In the end, all 21 of the Class 442s were in service from December 4, 1989, allowing for a full timetable to be introduced for high-speed Wessex Electric's operations between London, Basingstoke, Winchester, Southampton, Bournemouth, Poole and Weymouth. Although while most of the technical problems had been ironed out upon the adoption of the upgraded timetable, the units did spark some interesting confrontations between the train crews and the BR management, the first being on September 9, 1989, when several staff members refused to man the trains when a batch of brake pads were accidentally labelled as containing asbestos, though this was rectified by the following Monday, while due to the shape of their protruding end gangways, the sets quickly picked up the name of Plastic Pigs or Wessex Pigs, a moniker that didn't sit well with the management, who would threaten staff members with Form 1 disciplinary action if they were overheard mentioning that name. In 1990, the South Hampshire electrification scheme between Eastleigh and Fareham was energised, thus meaning that electric trains could now work between the primary southwest mainline corridor and Portsmouth without having to use the Portsmouth direct line via Guildford, the first five WES unit to operate on this line being on the inauguration day of the newly electrified route on May 9th of that year, transporting the British Rail Chairman, the Transport Secretary and other officials to the new station at Hedge End between Eastleigh and Botley, followed from April 27, 1992, by the launch of dedicated Wessex Electric services between London Waterloo and Portsmouth Harbour. Although due to track adhesion problems during the leaf fall season of autumn, the Class 442 units had a tendency to wheel slip on the steep gradients of the route, thus seeing them transferred to other duties during this time of year. The Portsmouth and Weymouth runs would be the only corridors the Class 442s would work along during the era of Network Southeast, as due to the length of the coaching stock, Clearance issues meant the number of diversionary routes these trains could utilise was limited to a handful when compared to older but shorter Mark I based units such as the 4CIG and 4VEP, including the diversionary route via Chertsey and Staines, the line between Worting Junction and Southampton via the Laverstock Loop, and the line from Romsey to Eastleigh and Southampton, although these required haulage with a diesel locomotive due to it being non electrified, while due to the length of combined 10 car sets, not every platform at London Waterloo was long enough to accommodate a full pair of units. On April 1st, 1994, amid the privatisation of British Rail, the entire fleet of Class 442 units were allocated to the ownership of Angel Trains, and upon the awarding of the South Western franchise to the stagecoach-owned South West Trains Company on February 5th, 1996, all routes out of London Waterloo to Basingstoke, Southampton, Portsmouth, Bournemouth and Weymouth fell under the auspices of this new company, reflected in a revised variant of the Network Southeast colours, which added a stripe of corporate orange to the pre-existing red band which matched the colour of Stagecoach's bus fleet, later followed in early 1998 by a striking colour scheme of red, orange, white and blue, truly giving these sets an illusion of speed even when standing still. The repaint into the new Southwest Trains livery 
being done while units were undergoing a refurbishment at Crew Works to modify the buffet cards in order to increase seating capacity at the cost of luggage space. Under the commitments of the Southwest Trains franchise, the aging slam door stock of the 1950s and 60s, including four CIG and four VEP units, which worked both commuter trains and long-distance expresses, were to be replaced by 110 Class 450s and 45 Class 444-0 units built by Siemens of Germany, the Class 450s being of an outer suburban configuration with high-density seating, while the 444s were to be put to work on express trains to Portsmouth, Bournemouth and Weymouth to supplement the Class 442s, the De Zero units entering service between 2004 and 2005 and allowing for all five WES sets to be dedicated to the Weymouth service at the expense of the Portsmouth runs. However, while another minor refurbishment was undertaken by Southwest Trains at Ilford Depot to improve the seating capacity of the 442s, as part of the company's franchise renewal in late 2006, the rail operator had proposed a revised rolling stock fleet strategy, whereby the troublesome Class 458 Juniper units on the Waterloo to Reading service would be returned to the leaser, but after a series of negotiations with Angel Trains, this instead resulted in a deal whereby the Class 458s would be retained pending a major overhaul to improve their reliability, and the Class 442s, in light of the arrival of new Class 444s, would be sidelined between January and February 2007, the first units being taken out of service from October 17, 2006, while the refurbishment program being conducted at Ilford Works was cancelled after only 15 units, the final run of Class 442s with Southwest Trains being on February 3, 2007, the last day of their lease, all sets being subsequently stored at either Eastleigh Works or Stewart's Lane Depot. The premature withdrawal of the Class 442s after only 18 years of service was not one without debate, as while Southwest trains were heavily criticised for removing these dedicated intercity trains from service amid a shortage of rolling stock and pervasive overcrowding, there was some rationale as to why the five WES sets had been chosen for retirement rather than the 458s, primarily due to the use of dated traction equipment originally derived from the four rep units of the 1960s, while internally, despite their highly optimised express train interiors, there were many modern passenger conveniences missing from within these units, including a lack of passenger information displays and the fact that they had very narrow single-leaf doors. The 442s, thankfully, were not out of service for long, as under a major refresh of the franchising system for Britain's railways, the Department for Transport chose to amalgamate the Gatwick Express franchise into the wider Southern franchise due to complaints that the dedicated Gatwick Express rolling stock was being underutilised and thus not contributing to improving capacity on the highly congested Brighton mainline, the intention being to alter Gatwick Express peak hour diagrams to extend some services through to Brighton, and thus, upon the absorption of Gatwick Express into Southern on June 22, 2008, a new timetable was proposed whereby refurbished 10-car Class 442s would be introduced to work the London Victoria to Brighton via Gatwick service from December 15 of that year, providing seating of up to 660 passengers when compared to the existing Gatwick Express stock, the Class 460 units, and their 360-seat 8-car capacity. Under the terms of a new contract signed between Govia, the parent company of Southern and Gatwick Express, and Lisa Angel Trains, 17 Class 442s would be needed to operate the service, working semi-permanently in pairs at the insistence of Network Rail due to a slew of reliability problems that had been encountered during their later years with Southwest Trains the fleet being serviced at Lover's Walk Depot in Brighton and utilising the 15 sets that had been recently refurbished at Ilford, alongside a further two sets which had been stored at Stewart's Lane Depot. Undergoing an overhaul to make them suitable for use as a dedicated airport connection service, all first-class accommodation, including the novel compartments, were stripped out in favour of full standard class seating, with the first-class sections relocated to the buffet car in what had formerly been known as the Snug, a large communal bench area perfectly suited for large families travelling to the seaside resorts of Hampshire and Dorset back in their days of Network Southeast and Southwest trains. While in order to overcome the pervasive lack of width to the passenger doors, especially in the face of having to convey customers travelling with large suitcases, some vestibule doors were widened and extra luggage space was provided, complemented by a dot matrix style interior information display carried over from the Class 377 units used by Southern. With driver training being undertaken from June 2008, and with a new red, blue and white livery being adopted, which matched the colours of the Class 460s, the first use of Class 442s with Gatwick Express took place on December 9th of the same year. Although due to delays in overhauling sets dedicated for the Gatwick run, several unrefurbished units were called in ahead of their overhaul to operate the full timetable, the phased refurbishment of the remaining units taking place into 2009 
as overhauled sets came online. Route clearance for the Class 442s being strictly on the London Victoria to Brighton service, both via the main line through Red Hill and the avoiding quarry line which passes to the east of the town. While acceptable diversionary routes included the line via Tools Hill and Hearn Hill to Victoria, and the lines between Battersea Park Junction and Factory Junction. Class 442s would be the mainstay of the Gatwick Express operation until January 2016, when, following the takeover of the Southern and Gatwick Express franchises by Govia Thameslink Railway Limited in July 2015, new rolling stock in the form of Class 700s would allow for the cascading of Class 387 units onto other services to replace both Class 319s and Class 442s and with these much younger units, with more modern interiors dedicated to high-capacity commuter and airport services, now entering operation on the Gatwick Express run, the last operations of five WES services with Southern took place in the early hours of September 17, 2016, all units being subsequently placed into storage once again at Papworth Sidings near Ely in Cambridgeshire. Fortunately, while the sets were being kept in open storage and thus exposed to the elements at Ely, Angel Trains still attempted to find new work for these specialised units with one proposal coming in November 2016 from open access operator Alliance Rail Holdings Limited, a subsidiary of Arriva, which had applied to operate nine trains each way per day between London Waterloo and Southampton under what would be known as the Grand Southern Railway, calling it Wimbledon, Hook, Basingstoke, Winchester and Eastley, the operator intending to use Class 442s in order to operate in direct competition with Southwest trains on its primary commuter corridor. Although sadly, on August 1st, 2018, the Office of Rail and Road rejected the Alliance proposal due to the Class 442s having been swept up by another operator, as well as not generating a sufficient amount of new revenue for each pound abstracted from the incumbent operators. That new operator was Southwest Train's successor, Southwestern Railway, which took over the franchise on August 20, 2017, and in October of that year, entered into a £45 million contract with Keeper Electric so as to refurbish 18 Class 442s for re-entry into service by early 2019. Delays in this overhaul leading to a limited start of five WES operations on the London Waterloo to Portsmouth service from May of that year, followed by additional diagrams being introduced from September 2nd. Although due to a pervasive safety concern caused by these units in the Earlsfield area, where it was feared that Class 442s were wrongly turning signals to danger as they approached, the sets were withdrawn once again and not reinstated until January 6th, 2020. Sadly, the restart of Class 442 operations on the Portsmouth service was ill-timed, as from March 2020, with the exponential rise of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lockdown was implemented on the United Kingdom, and Southwestern Railway was forced to cut back on their service patterns as only essential travel was granted, the very last run of a Class 442 and revenue earnings service taking place on March 18th, with all units being placed into storage at various locations, including Fratton Depot and Bournemouth. In light of the reduced passenger numbers caused by the pandemic and factoring in the age of the 442 units, on March 31, 2021, Southwestern Railway's engineering director issued an announcement that the five WES sets would be withdrawn completely from use, with their previous diagrams to Portsmouth instead being taken over by modified Class 458 sets upgraded to 110 miles an hour at a total contract cost of £25 million. The entire fleet of train sets being stripped of components and scrapped Although one driving trailer from Class Premier 442401, which was originally to be preserved as part of the National Collection, was instead rescued from the cutter's torch by Northumbria Rail and is to be restored as a static exhibit. In the end, the Class 442 Wessex Electrics proved during their brief careers to be a true revival of dedicated intercity express services on the southwestern main line to Bournemouth and Weymouth, reintroducing fast, comfortable and stylish travel for those using this primary corridor between London and the southern resort towns of Hampshire and Dorset. Although the purpose-built nature of these sets meant their flexibility to work across the wider southern region was extremely limited, and once their primary role as an express train had been lost, there were only a very restricted number of options left available for their onward use, thus assuring their inevitable demise.